This video will demonstrate how to score a live game with stat broadcast and turbo stats. The first thing you want to do is open up the team you want to have on the left side of your scoring screen. If you want to match stat broadcast, use the visiting team. If you want to match a scoreboard that has the home team on the left side, choose the home team. Hit open existing team, pick the team. Here's your lineup. You could edit any uniform numbers or player names. You could change photos by double clicking on the photo. Create a player called Team. That will track all your team rebounds. You could also put the logo for the team in the photo. When you're ready to score the game, click on the Games tab at the top. This will bring up the game form. Right now we have one game scored. Here's the players who played in that game. If you select the players, you can see some of their stats and shot charts. Just a sample game. To create a new game, hit the Add Game button. You want to select the opponent from the top menu. Don't pick a team that's in the list. Choose Browse and select the team they're going to play. Then you can enter information about the game. You could choose whether they're the home or the visiting team. In this case, we're the visitors. You can pick the location or type in the location. You can put in the officials' names, what the attendance was, and any information you want about notes on the game. To start live scoring, hit the live button at the top or the live score button at the bottom. It'll ask you if you want to create a new game for the opponent, choose yes. This is the main startup screen here. No players are entered in the game. They're all on the bench for now. Click on the Preferences tab. And then set the game properties, how many timeouts you're going to have, whether the timeouts are going to reset at halftime or not. If you're using four-point shooting, make sure all these options are checked here. We're going to choose no clock reset for this game because there's no running clock. Put in 60 minutes and we'll track playing time, which is good for player efficiency stats. Put in the number of uh, periods per game, how many players are in the game. If you change the time, you want to you want to hit the reset clock button. If you change the number of timeouts, hit the reset timeouts button. You'll see a change on the scoreboard. If you need to make any changes on the scoreboard, you could manually double click and make changes as well. Click on the display tab if you want to set up your three-point line and whether you want to track uncontested shots. With uncontested shots you'll see there's a C on the scoring screen here. If you turn it off that's what it'll look like. We're going to turn it on. The uncontested shots will be tracked and recorded in stat broadcast. And one other option here in terms of the webcasting you want to set up under hosting site local file XML. Make sure the path is C colon slash basket. You could choose browse if you want to select the path and select any file in that folder and it'll put that folder ID in there. Check XML possessions or advanced metrics if you want to include them in the report. If you have any issues broadcasting you might want to try turning those features off. So we're ready to score the game, and what we want to do is bring in the players and put them into the game, the starters. You could simply double click and the next available position will be taken. Same thing with the opponent. If you want to turn on the player photos, you could score with the photos. Uh, just double click anywhere on this photo on the left, they'll turn on. If you double click again, it'll switch between rebounds and rebound percentages. Let's leave the photos on for now. Now to start, start scoring, there's many ways that you could score the game. You could first select a location on the floor. If you do that first, the miss option will come up by default. If you click a player number, that player will get a missed shot. If there's a rebound, it'll prompt you. Select either team, it knows the difference between all offensive and defensive rebound. We want to start the clock, get that going, and we want to start the broadcast now. So click on the 
post online button and then choose webcast that'll start the process of making the XML file then we want to go over to the SAT broadcast program we don't want to close this now because that'll turn off the broadcasting so just minimize it start up the stat broadcaster app load your new event which we already did then choose start transmitting okay you can minimize this as well okay so let's check our output see if anything has shown up on the site yet here's our game in stat broadcast it's all set up ready to go Let's start scoring some events and we'll see the updates online. Let's hit a made basket, a uniform number, and the location on the court, who made the assist. And let's see the update. We see a good jumper, three points. Okay. And it posts the assist. Now, you could select any of these four-point zones and they will highlight to let you know that you're picking a four-pointer if you're close and miss it'll show up as a three-pointer and you could also track whether it's an uncontested shot or not so if it's an uncontested made four-pointer click the C button here and then the uniform number of the player that took the shot and then the assist if there's no assist you could click on assist by and it will turn off the assist. TurboSats tracks whether it's a an unassisted or assisted shot so that'll update for you automatically. If it's a made three-pointer and there's no assist, choose unassist. Looks like for four-pointers you're gonna have to un turn off the unassist option for now. That may be updated in a future game. If there's any shots in the paint, it'll keep track of paint points. Choose the factor screen, and here's all the game factors. So if it's a shot in the paint and it's made, you'll see the paint points adjust here, and you could edit those at any time if you need to. To enter turnovers, Simply tap steal if it's a stolen ball. The player's uniform number, you'll be prompted for who made the turnover. Now it's a turnover type shot right now. The TO is highlighted. So if there's a made basket off a turnover here, you'll see that the basket is shown in blue and there is a off turnover shot entered in the factors box. If there is a shot taken that's missed and does not hit the backboard, the defense could rebound the shot and make a quick basket without taking the ball back to be checked. So what you do is just double click the made or missed boxes and that'll enter it as a transition basket. You see the TR down here. If you need to turn it off, you can click on it or click again to turn it on manually. Select the uniform number of the player, spot on the floor, and if there was assist or not. And you'll see now transition basket was entered for that team. If there's a block, the best way to enter it is to click on block and then miss. Choose the location on the floor of the shot. The player who took the shot who blocked the shot will be prompted for and then if there's a rebound if it happens to be a team rebound and went out of bounds you can click the T at the bottom and that will enter a team event. So let's go back and check the stat broadcast page. We can look at our stats here and choose update occasionally if you want to get the totals recalculated. It will update whichever player you actively score a shot for. So if you click on Ricky Davis, made a four pointer, let's watch it updates automatically for you.
Let's check the stat broadcast page and see how that's looking. Here we go. See it's 10-10. Ricky Davis just took that shot. We didn't enter the assist yet. Let's click on who got the assist and see the update. There's the update. Now, if there's a miss basket, TurboStats has a putback feature that enters an offensive rebound and the shot in one sequence. So you can choose a missed shot, and then putback made instead of rebound, and then just click on the uniform number of the player. It will put the shot behind the backboard showing that it was a putback, and it's in pink showing that it was a second chance shot. So if you come here and you look at the second chance, it will be entered. And if you click on the stat broadcast page, it breaks it down into two events. It'll show the missed shot and then the rebound and then the layup right after that. So that saves you quite a bit of time. When you're ready to make subs, what you need to do, there's three ways to sub, is you could simply drag a player from the bench and drop them right in on any player. Okay, that will enter the sub. Or you could tap on the top of the screen and select players who are prepared to come into the game. They're either at the scorers table or you can see that they're going to be coming in. So you check them and now you can keep scoring events. And when the rebound goes out of play and there's going to be a sub, all you have to do is, if you're using a mouse, you could right click on the number. If you're using a tablet, you could just swipe and the sub will be made. There's one other way to enter subs. You can click the TurboStats button at the top of the screen. And then you could just select the sub that you want to replace that particular player. That's very quick. You can either click here on the team names or back on the TurboStat button again to turn the sub feature off. If you would like to make your scoring screen bigger, there's a scale mode you could set by tapping this button in the top corner. Before I do that, I'm going to show you that if you expand the screen, you can show more statistics on the page, or you could show events or scouting information. Scouting will show the types of shots, uh, plays that you run. So you could enter plays in TurboSets. You click the play button here. Let me close the factors. And you could say, well, there was a pick and roll. Five made a dunk, assisted by one. And if you look on that team, you'll see there was a pick and roll now. And then all the different stats here. If you keep clicking Scout, it'll expand across the screen more. You can see more of the categories. Tracks all these stats per play. So let's make the screen smaller again, and we're going to scale it up. If you like to maximize it on your device, you could just click this scale button down. And then if you click the max button, it'll maximize it into your screen's maximum size, or you could scale it manually by dragging on the corners. Okay. To enter a timeout, simply select a partial or a full timeout and the T for the team, or you can even click on the picture, and that'll enter the timeout for that team. If you want to enter a tie-up, click on the tie-up button, and then select the player on defense who made the tie-up. If you want to enter a take charge, with an offensive foul, click on Take Charge, click on the player who took the charge, and the offensive foul, select the player who made the offensive foul. Now if you notice the fouls are including offensive fouls, there are preferences that you could change, go into Game Properties, and then you could uncheck Offensive Fouls and Bonus. Now if I enter an offensive foul by saying either Turnover or just Offensive Foul at the top here, the foul will not include in your team fouls. So if you get behind in turning the clock on and off, you could change the clock by just selecting these arrows to adjust the clock, or you can click in the box and type in how many seconds are left on the clock. 
You want to do that mainly before you sub. That'll keep the playing time accurate. When it's time to change to the second period, let's take some time off clock. Add a few more events. If you want an uncontested shot made from the four-point line, assist. And if you notice when you click on a player, their shot chart comes up automatically so you can see the last shot. It's helpful if you want to select the players first before you make a next shot on the floor. You can see some of the other shots where they won't overlap so much. Turbo Stats also tracks what we call last second shots. These are shots that are thrown up just to beat the shot clock or the end of a period. If you hit the LS missed option here and choose the shot, okay, and the player, it'll show an L indicating that that wasn't really a quality shot. There are calculations in our metrics that disclude last second shots. We don't disclude them in regular field goal percentages, but it's nice to see when you click on a player what type of shots they're taking and knowing whether they're quality shots or not. You can see uncontested shots over here, last second shots, putbacks. The different colors indicate um, how that shot was made. This is a transition shot because it was uh, it's in brown here. If it's off a turnover, let's just say that there was a turnover. Bad pass. 10 made a shot here. Okay, no assist. You can see that's in blue. That shot's off a turnover. So you get a quick view of the shot chart and you can tell the type of shots that are being made. So let's jump back and check the um, stat broadcast and see how we're looking here. I can move this screen down a little bit. Um, hang on one second. Here we go. This bar at the top, the TurboStat sub bar, sometimes because it's always on top, it might get in the way of an application. You could hide it temporarily if you need to, and then click the score button down here twice, and it'll come back. So here's the score here, 1416. Um, if you want to look at some player stats, we can look down here. We'll go to visiting team and look at some of these stats down here. Okay, here's Harrington. He's got 11 points. Here's our points. Um, his net rating is 86, 85.5. Net rating is a really nice statistic that took us over eight years to develop using all college and NBA and high school stats to determine the best overall way to rate players based on points per possession principles. It's not like NBA per where you could take a lot of bad shots and your per would increase. With net, if you take bad shots, your net will surely decrease. But it really factors in overall player performance. As you start to look at the numbers, you'll see how long, how much time we put into that number. So that's net. It stands for normalized efficiency to total. It's normalized to a 100-point scale. So a player with a net in the 90s would be an A player. There will definitely be games when some players are over 100. And that's normal. But usually average for the season, players will end up really good players in the 90s, close to 100 range. And you'll, you'll see the trend from that. Another great feature with TurboStats that you won't find in other programs is that TurboStats tracks the actual rebound that are available on the floor when the players are playing. So for instance, if there is a missed offensive shot, each player that's on the offensive team will get one rebound opportunity for offensive on the defensive team there'll be one defensive rebound opportunity added so if I give a defensive rebound over here you see that every player got a defensive rebound opportunity since they've been on the floor the one who got it got an extra rebound 
but we create true rebound percentages. If you go to preferences and go to player stats, you can show actual rebound percentage if you want. It'll show the percentage of the rebounds that they're getting based on the, how many are available. So let's enter some sh missed shots and we'll see how that works. You start to see how these numbers are going up. Let's demonstrate how to change a shot that might have been called the three-pointer originally, but then was changed to a two. So here we've entered a three-point shot made with no assist. They review the shot. It's determined it was a two-point shot. All you need to do is double-click here and select that shot in the list here, double click on it. That'll bring you to the edit screen and you could choose edit, okay, or move, and you can move the shot location, okay, and if you hit edit and then close, it'll prompt you, do you want to update the statistics from a two to a three, you hit okay, you see the shot changes, it will also change in the event log, if you choose events, you know, from that point downward, it would edit the uh, points. So that's a quick way to change shots if the location is over overruled. Another thing you could do is you can go right into the stat screen and say for instance uh, you want to change a, a three-point shot. Let's find someone who had a three and instead it, it was really a four. So you can come in here manually if it's later in the game you don't have time to go and find it in the list. You could just come in here take away the three-point shot made and add a four-point field goal attempt and made and make that change quickly and that will update um, in the broadcast once you click on the webcast or enter another play. So if you want to manually change the broadcast just hit webcast and that'll run through everything update and we'll look at that now real quick. And so we see the score is 17 to 16 so it did take the change in the player's stats will be updated. So if there's going to be a timeout, we click on the timeout and the team. If they're going to change the period now to the second period, we're going to leave the clock running at the same time, but click the period option. And this way in the stat broadcast, it will note that the period changed. Go back to the encore here start of period two. If you'd like to create a quick box score, you can click the box score tab up here. If you want to add things like shoot, shooting factors are here, they may be on, you can turn them on or off. If you want to add the play-by-play, -play, click that button. You could print this out, you could post it up to the internet very quickly with one, one button here. If you post your HTML, your stat broadcast will stop. You're going to have to turn it back on again. Let me just show you how to do that real quick. I just hit the upload button. It's going to give you the link that it uploads to. So if you want to send that out to someone, you could update that as the game's going on, or you can just update it at halftime. Okay. And then what happens is you got to come back here, close it, go back to the large chart, and now click post online again, and then webcast to get your broadcast going again. Just remember to do that step. If you're not going to enter any plays, you could turn this box off, going into the preference option under display. You can see the show play types box, uncheck it. That'll go away so you have more room to enter stats. You can still click on the plays button here at the bottom and there's also plays on the side here that you could display it in any of two places. So as you get better at scoring you want to keep track of more of the action. You could select the play, give and go, made, five, location on the floor, who got the assist. Okay so very simple if you go into the events. Let me make this screen a little higher. 
you can see that give and go is entered as a play here. If you need to change anything, you could easily hit undo. You can undo back a few events if you need to. We also keep track of a running timer to keep track of the elapsed time. If you'd like to turn that on, just click the camera button up here. And that'll keep a running time, and those events could be put into the play-by-play -play and synced with any video that you have of the game after the game. You just simply need to start the camera at the beginning of each period, and then just it'll be synced up. You just get the video and put it into the program, and it'll show you the clips. TurboSats says one more feature. It allows you to track who the point guard is. If you want to keep track of how your offense is, is performing with different point guards, you can move this ball up and put it on whoever the point guard is. Okay, as you enter an event with that point guard, you look down here and it keeps track of the number of the point guard for that play. Then you can make separate stats under um, Scout and you could choose offense, defense, point guard, and it'll show you all the plays for each different point guard all broken down. That about wraps it up. If you want to use the plus or minus option, it could show you the five player combinations, clicking on this button. But when the game is over, what we want to do is end the game. You could just exit out of the screen if you want to, but if you want to stay in the scoring mode, but put the uh, final uh, out there on the stat broadcast. If it gets to 60, it'll do it automatically. Uh, it should, but you could always go into the preferences and then go to the game properties and choose end game. That'll end the game, finalize all the time and the minutes for the players. If you go into the stat broadcast now, it should say final, even though it, you didn't get to 60 in this case. But just shows you how, if you want to hit undo, you can undo that webcast it again and go back to stat broadcast and that should go back so you have full control of what you want to mark up there after the game's over and you exit out of the game screen you can just pop up your stat broadcast and stop transmitting if you need any technical support we could be reached at support at turbostats.com or check our website, www.turbostats.com. Thank you.